Yo, well, Snapchat, so one of the awesome like online tech thinkers that I, that I follow a lot, uh, Jonathan Libovnis, wrote this awesome article called Art, Culture and Creativity at Zero Marginal Cost. He was exploring the concepts and the implications of what happens when AI and computers start gradually overtaking more and more of the creative process that, that humans tend to associate to art and creation. Whenever you think of like unique human creations like art and works of art, it's a very romanticized kind of notion and you, you associate a lot of time and effort and tears and sweat and blood have gone into it. And that's what gives a lot of art and, and kind of creative uh, endeavors a lot of value because they're authentic, they're creative, they're usually original and they're unique. So there's a novelty factor to it. This is why works of art are typically you know, very uh, valuable um, and they're very expensive to buy because it's taken an individual a lot of time and effort to create that piece of art and it's unique, a one-off in the world. But technology has this universal tendency to move towards democratizing creativity and creation and driving down the cost of things to zero cost. I mean, you think of everything we do now, it's near zero marginal cost. So right at the top of his blog post, he gave this example of you know uh, taking photographs. Like back in the early days when you had rolls of film, every photograph you took was a very kind of a uh, conscious thing because it's a once-off, you're scared. Even the cheapest camera you could buy, like a disposable throwaway camera, um, the, the roll of film you had to buy was still quite expensive, quite expensive to get developed, and you only had a maximum of say like 20, 30, 40 shots. And that meant you put a lot of effort and thought and conscious kind of uh, concern and worry into each photo. You wanted it to be great, a great photo and a great shot uh, in the right moment because it was scarcity. But now with digital cameras and our phones, we can take a neat infinite amount of photos and upload them to the cloud at zero cost. <laughs> I mean, the burst mode on your phone, your iPhone, your Android usually takes more photos than the roll of film held. And so that's a perfect example of uh, just in the realm of photography of creativity merging towards, like driving towards zero marginal cost. It used to be a, a very expensive, creative, you know, unique endeavor. Now it's just like, and by driving the cost of photographs and videos down to basically zero dollars, um, it's changed the entire society and culture. I mean, now we have so much data of all these photographs of everywhere in the world. Like multi-billion dollar industries have popped up. You think of like Snapchat, you think of Facebook, you think of all the photos, you think of all the machine learning that's occurring on these photographs, uh, Instagram. It's it created a huge new industry. And we're not at the stage yet where AI and computers can create perfect, beautiful, aesthetic art that everyone's like, wow, yeah, that's definitely art. Um, but it's, it's gradually attacking little areas uh, of creation. It's funny actually when I post this to my Facebook, uh, if you're my uh, friends who are less capable of thinking abstractly, we're just attacking, they're like, oh, that's not art, you know, don't tell me what art is. I hate the word art, it's such a wank word. So best not to say the word art, people have this very subjective view and it's like, they hold on to it as though like, uh, computers can never do art, it's a human thing, don't tell me what art is. It's a so anyway, in this blog post, he gave a bunch of examples of what uh, different technologies are attacking right now. So there's things like uh, in, in Adobe Photoshop, there's a the content aware feel, and that's a form of creativity, but it's a little extra feel. It's like computers and algorithms and AI kind of assisting in the creative process. So the, the uh, Photoshop feel kind of helps you do that process without the manual tedium that it used to take. And then there's other stuff where like Autodesk Within, which helps engineers and designers kind of like automatically generate through algorithmic processes uh, different designs that actually work structurally. So one example is a bike structure. There are other examples of like auto-generated songs, auto-generated uh, screenplays and scripts, particularly like things like dialogue. So this concept of like computer-assisted feel for cre the creative process is really awesome. One of my favorite examples of like computer-generated AI and creativity is this game coming out next month called No Man's Sky. It actually uses a procedural program to create all the worlds, all the environments. So it's a space game where you fly around, and actually what it's done is it's generated, um, I think like 18 qu quintillion planets, unique planets, that are individual to each other. And the game environment is so vast that it would take you 5 billion years to explore every one of those planets. And this is epic. So imagine this across every type of game, just automatically if you go some, look up some of the examples of the maps and the, the UI and the design, they don't look like they've been generated by, by a computer. They look like a game designer has actually sat down and designed everything, but it's all automatic. So now imagine if computer games, instead of being built from the top down, they're actually built from the bottom up. Uh, at first they might be really shit to play, really mediocre, but then they learn and evolve over time for whatever aspect you want. And now this application of uh, kind of machine learning and evolving systems combined with uh, this kind of like procedurally generated creativity and art has huge implications across society. Just like the music industry went from this concept of uh, live music because it was a scarce commodity to uh, products like CDs and stuff to now online streaming, it's driving towards zero marginal. So too will every other form of media and entertainment. Um, if you're a producer of content or creation or art or games or whatever, you need to be able to create, a, create something at zero marginal cost to get the competitive advantage. Meaning if you can generate a song or a game or some type of media, some type of consumable content that, main, that keeps the user's attention but it costs you zero dollars to produce, then you've won. And then this leads into some very personalized worlds where everything you watch and see and consume, like every movie, every art, every song, every game, is all uniquely created just for you. 
Richard Dawkins' next book cover will actually have unique computer-generated graphics on the cover, so no two books in the world will ever be the same. That's really cool. Now apply that to every other form of media. This whole concept is a unique selling point of 3D printing and the kind of sell, the vision it's trying to sell is the idea that no two products in the world will ever be the same. Every product you create is unique just for you, personalized. It's funny though, because I already know what happens. So in the, in the world of AI research, uh, before that narrow AI is created, everyone's like, that's AI. And then once it's created, everyone's like, that's not AI. So for example, the spell check thing in Google, uh, in Google search, uh, before that was created, that was like magic. Like, whoa, how do we create that? That's a massive AI problem. Now it's done. Nobody considers that to be AI. The same will occur with uh, AI creativity. As more AI processes, narrow AI, are uh, uh, taking over creative tasks, people will relegate that to this idea of like, that's not AI. For example, before uh, Adobe Photoshop's uh, content aware field, that was magic. That was like a massive, tedious process that designers had to do. Now that you can do it easily with a click, it's... That content aware field feature in, in Photoshop is literally AI exhibiting creative qualities and creative abilities, but it's helping the designers. They don't really see it that way. And over the years, as more and more AI features take over little bits of uh, human creativity, they'll assist humans with more creative endeavors, which will push up the higher value creativity. Now, very quickly get to the point where 99% of what humans used to consider as part of the creative process will be automated by computers and AI. But of course, the egotistical artiste will still claim it's all them. And I have a feeling this whole concept of like art and creativity, uniqueness, authenticity, entertainment, media, it'll all revolve around trying to capture as much human attention as possible. And obviously the easiest way to do this is to create a feedback system between the human brain. So monitor brainwave activity and create procedurally generated art and content that suits exactly to your taste at future.